Okay. Uh, to start with, I would like to thank uh, both Bala and Ajit uh, for uh, giving me this opportunity to uh, speak. Uh, I'll be mostly uh, talking about the, some of the work uh, which uh, I was also part of it and uh, uh, in continuation with what he has done uh, earlier. So it's uh, just to remind that it is a fond memory of uh, Vishweshwara. Uh, I was uh, uh, fortunate to work with him for a few years uh, and uh, all that education uh, or teaching which he has done has been uh, extremely useful and a lot of insight uh, got into various uh, different aspects of uh, general theory of uh, uh, relativity. Uh, he will be always uh, remembered for uh, bringing smile on people. Uh, that is, uh, as everyone else uh, known him has, uh, uh, and uh, by bringing in uh, various humor uh, to science and day-to-day uh, uh, -day things. But uh, I must uh, confess that uh, the humor never touched me uh, so deeply, so I, my talk would be mostly like, uh, this which you put to more sleep than yawn rather than smile. So this is a talk which he has given, the after dinner talk uh, in GR15. I strongly recommend uh, all of you to read, uh, not just for the content, but a few uh, caricatures uh, which he has done uh, himself. So let me uh, go to Frenesiri formalism. Uh, it's a very interesting. Uh, system uh, for a given curves, uh, which are uh, not flat, uh, straight lines, it's uh, one of the most uh, natural uh, frames. Uh, you have tangent, uh, velocity, normal, which you call acceleration, and binormal, completely define the frame and curve. So if you have a curve, you can have a tangent, which is a velocity, and uh, you have a normal, which is ortho orthogonal to that, that is acceleration. Uh, and uh, this is given by simple equation. Now you can take a derivative of a normal, that is acceleration, and that requires uh, another uh, vector, which is called binormal. This completely defines the frame. So sorry for being a little technical, but it always amuses me to talk about when I said a frame being so fundamental to geometry. So this frame moves along the curve, what is called uh, oscillating, which is termed called kissing the curve. So the dynamics are uh, not dynamics, evolution equation for all the uh, curves are given by this. The interpretation here is that the acceleration, uh, which is given by this parameter, tells the how curves bend in the uh, plane, uh, along the tangent and the normal. And the tau, uh, that is called the torsion, which represents how the curve leaves the uh, plane spanned by the normal uh, tangent and the normal. So this, uh, this interesting formalism, so fundamental, it can be extended to any dimension, to the Riemann space or space time. And that uh, work was, uh, done by Ayer and Vishweshwara in 98. Uh, just skip this because you can write it on any dimension just to have it written in six dimension. Now the application is the most interesting part. The first application come in 1971. How does a charged particle move in a homogeneous uh, electromagnetic uh, case? Uh, and uh, here, uh, Frenesere formalism was uh, applied uh, and some interesting effect. You can write down the equation of motion for charged particle with the electromagnetic tensor and you can immediately show that the, all the Frenesere parameters are constant. So this is done in the space time. So you have three parameters, curvature, first uh, a torsion and second torsion. And uh, they all can be related to the uh, so the interesting part uh, comes from the application to quasi uh, killing trajectory or uh, killing trajectories uh, 
as you are also uh, assisting, uh, Ishwishwara, I enjoyed uh, giving uh, uh, short names and you can see is the S uh, stands for the actually symmetric stationary is space time. So the equations are uh, remarkably similar uh, to that of uh, uh, equation of motion of charged particle, uh, where the killing trajectories are very fundamental to the space time. And uh, you can also show that uh, all these things are conserved and you can express them completely in terms of uh, uh, F nu nu, which is a derivative of the killing vector. So this gives a new expression. Again, all the black hole physics, null, uh, surface, everything can be expressed in terms of F nu nu or in terms of uh, Fresnel uh, formula. So this was, all the results were summarized uh, in a, so far, very massive paper. Uh, it is, uh, takes a long time to read it. Uh, it was the beginning of uh, my work, essentially start from uh, this point, where I essentially learned most of my, a, general theory of relativity uh, from the, uh, from uh, Vishu himself. And uh, well, I just uh, joined at that time, I didn't, I wanted to work with him and I wanted to learn general theory of uh, relativity. And he said, all right, uh, you'll learn and uh, you go to board and he sits and he tells me what to do. And I have to simply go to board and write everything down. He said, I will correct you whenever you go wrong. So, well, I went all wrong, so but he corrected space time, uh, black holes and uh, killing equations and how it is related to event horizons and uh, uh, stationary space. Uh, his discussion uh, didn't confine only to physics. They often change mixed with the topics such as uh, hailing Schuppel Gluber. Uh, well, I didn't even know who was a Schuppel Gluber, so. Uh, and also to, to Chandrasekhar. He was uh, very fond of uh, Chandrasekhar. Uh, often subject goes back to gyroscopes and how it works and so on. So there's a lot of things uh, which he learned, not just about uh, relativity and related aspects and in general various uh, things. Uh, and time ever get distorted there in that uh, room and every time when I come back after uh, so-called my one-to-one -one relativity class or killing vectors, I had to figure out and write everything down because I was writing on the board. I did not have chance to make a note of it. So I had to filter, uh, filter out things uh, like this. It's literally like monkey with a lot of bananas and slowly things uh, begin to emerge and uh, again, all of a relativity, it has to be put in one single slide. Uh, again, this would be this. <laughs> so you have uh, space time, equivalence relation, rotating coordinate. He was very fond of rotating coordinates. Uh, and then you have full general theory of relativity. On the sides, you all had these killing vector fields and a lot of things uh, going on. So this is uh, all about uh, killing vectors and so on. It's a very fascinating subject. He was very much excited uh, about talking about killing vectors. So it's uh, so fundamental. And uh, uh, some of the excitement was passed over to me. I also enjoyed this subject very much. So gyroscopes. Gyroscopes are uh, mathematically uh, depicted or modeled as a Fermi Walker transport. It's basically a, in a relativity, when the propagation is made along the curve, you cannot stop having a rotation. The bare minimum rotation you need, needed is a Lorentz transformation. So anything other than Lorentz transformation can be considered as a spatial rotation. So mathematically, a gyroscope or a, is, represents a transformation which has a rotation only in the velocity and acceleration frame, and that is essentially Lorentz transformation. All other 
uh, rotations or uh, transformations are left out. So if you have a rule for transformation uh, like this, and then uh, you have uh, uh, written as a Fermi Walker part, that is you separate out the Lorentz transformation or the rotation in the uh, velocity and acceleration frame. And what is left out is basically a spatial rotation. So that is essentially the decision of necessary frame. You can have a general frame over which you can uh, write a Fresnesere, uh, no, you can write a Fermi Walker transport and, and then you left with a spatial rotation. So that has been what is used in the work. So you split the Fresnesere frame into Fermi Walker part and the spatial rotation. That means a gyroscope carried with the Fresnesere frame would be processing with this frequency given by these two parameters. So another interesting topic connected to this uh, is what is called the GOES. The GOES, uh, again, it's uh, another interesting name. So GOES has nothing to do with the souls wandering around, but they are uh, simply called uh, globally hypersurface uh, orthogonal traject trajectories. Now you can uh, take a Fresnesere frame or gyroscopes uh, and say that uh, there should not be any spatial rotation. That means all the frames should match with the Fermi Walker transport. So such frame can be obtained by putting tau 1 and tau 2 to be 0, and those have no spatial rotation. And uh, earlier, they were known as a locally non-rotating observer or zero angular momentum observer. However, with the reasonable assumption, uh, you can show that these all congruences with have no spatial rotations are in fact the global hypersurface forming. So that is why these goals are uh, very fundamental to stationary space. So this work goes back to 1975 where uh, I worked with the stationary space time the rest frames. Because these do not have any spatial rotation, an observer who is following them considered to be rest, and they are closest frame to the Newtonian rest frame. So this idea was uh, used further, but I, before going into that, I will uh, briefly talk about the Fresnesere formalism extended to the null world lines. Uh, what we have, uh, whatever earlier done was uh, with respect to uh, the time-like curves, and the same thing can be extended to null curves. Null curves uh, essentially means that you have a trajectory uh, along which light propagate, but light propagate along null geodesics. The, all the circular orbits around the black holes, you can have a geodesics and you can have a non-geodesic. So do you can construct a null non-geodesics, and then you can form a, a tetrad with the two null geodesics and two space-like geodesics, and you can construct a full Fresnesere evolution equation uh, satisfying this. This work was done by Binney and uh, co-workers in uh, 2006. Of course, it's not that uh, we did not have this idea. I think uh, Bala very much know that uh, we had worked this lot, a uh, lot of it, but some of it did not uh, converge to write up and uh, publish. So this is called uh, perish without publishing. So this is, uh, I think, a well-known uh, cartoon, which again came in the Goa paper, which I did some modification, not much. It is a guy who discovered, the guru who discovered uh, gravity did not uh, realize that there were coconut trees and he perished uh, without uh, publishing. So uh, coming back to global rest frames, uh, is uh, global rest frames uh, being so close to Newtonian rest frames, uh, that is global inertial frames, uh, this, those can be used to define what is known as a uh, inertial forces. Inertial forces is a completely Newtonian concept 
does not get carried over to general theory of relativity because is where idea of forces has been replaced by the curvatures of the space time. Now here uh, often the relativity is so complicated, uh, so you would like to get insight by going backward from Newtonian dynamics. So one of the way is to uh, define uh, what is called uh, Newtonian equivalent of inertial forces in some specific cases. It is possible you have to have rest frame, Newtonian like rest frame, which are now defined by these ghosts, and uh, you can define complete uh, inertial forces. So, this work was done by Abramovich and co workers. They have used these uh, trajectories, uh, ghost or uh, Newtonian rest frame. Uh, equivalent of general relativity to define uh, what is called the all inertial forces. You can split the acceleration of a particle into gravitational, Coriolis, and centrifugal forces. And Euler forces is the acceleration of speed. So these are the references where these works were first uh, carried out. Now, these uh, become high fashioned uh, when I was doing my. A PhD. So one interesting thing it comes is uh, uh, what is known as a centrifugal force uh, reversal in the black hole space time. In the case of a spherically symmetric space time, uh, when r is equal to 3m, uh, there is a circular null geodesy. So that is a place where centrifugal uh, force reverses its direction from outside to inside. And that is an interesting place also where uh, uh, Geodesic uh, precision also stops in the or reverses its sign. So at the same place, uh, all the gyroscopes which are uh, precessing would stop and also reverse. So they speculated that uh, it is all connected in some way. So in uh, at r is equal to 3m, very close to black hole, uh, you have a reversal of centrifugal force, reversal of gyroscopic precision and uh, circular uh, null geodesy. So they must be connected in some way. That was uh, one part of work uh, uh, which I've uh, done with the Vishveshwara. So here we showed formally that in the case of uh, all uh, static space time, circular null geodesy necessarily means the reversal of gyroscopic precision and centrifugal force. Now uh, this uh, result cannot be extended to uh, general actually symmetric space time such as Kerr metric where all this happens there are two null geodesic co-rotating and counter rotating they happen at different uh, place at the same time and, uh, this reversal of gyroscopic precision and centrifugal reversal also does not happen at the same place so you can show formally that it is not possible so once you have a new frames uh, Newtonian like uh, rest frame, then you can do almost uh, everything what you can do with the Newtonian mechanics or related concept in the general theory of relativity. Another interesting concept is a gravitomagnetic effect. So it is an effect where you have a, a dragging of space time in the actually symmetric system uh, with uh, which uh, affects like a, a magnetic, it behaves like a magnetic field. So it is uh, called uh, gravitomagnetic effect uh, because of the Coriolis uh, force like effect uh, coming into general theory of relativity, space time being dragged uh, is uh, portrayed as a gravitomagnetic effect. So this is essentially done uh, by the uh, defining FA, FAB which is a derivative of killing vector and you can project them with respect to the new observer that is these are NA is the observer following the ghost trajectory and then you can define the electric and uh, magnetic fields and then you can show various things so uh, you can derive the, how they are related to Einstein's equation and all that things. And now you have a three-way relation between the uh, Renesere formalism, inertial forces and the gravitomagnetic uh, effect. I'm uh, coming uh, close to the end of uh, my talk. Uh, one of the most inspiring thing uh, which I often taught is nothing is being uh, 
uh, written in the stone. So there's always things uh, you could uh, change. Uh, uh, you could expect, follow your own passion to do science in what you like to do in the field, uh, starting from the sneezing of uh, black hole, sneezing of ants to perturbing uh, black hole. Uh, this thing. I continue with the, what uh, the partial quote which Wala had given. I extend it to the worse time. He himself has uh, faced uh, the various uh, effect of people not being uh, taking seriously the things about which does not exist, working on investigating the things between uh, unobservable or things uh, have a doubtful existence. And from there to actually having the detection of uh, gravitational waves and this last few ringing of the quasi-normal modes. So uh, I started my work with him uh, in, a late, uh, uh, in the mid 90s, uh, uh, that is when I first met him. Uh, when I met him, uh, I met him immediately after I joined, maybe next day. I knocked his room, took all my courage, knocked the door. I was not sure what was uh, making bigger sound, whether my thumbing of my heart or knocking of my door. Nevertheless, I went inside. And then from there, it was completely a different picture. Uh, all together, and these many days I have enjoyed uh, not just during my work with him and even after that in interaction with him. Thank you. Uh, plenty of time for questions. So Rajesh, this, this Newtonian like interpretation of this gravitomagnetic effect, etc., is it useful for re relating this into experimental research, such as this um, gravity probe, this uh, gyroscope ah, position, and so on? Yes. It's just a matter of just an interpretation. Yeah, uh, no, actually, they have been used for uh, doing various calculations, but it is more useful for uh, uh, various interpretations. One of the things is, uh, of course, I did not bring in the uh, gravity probe. Uh, that is being closely related to this grab observation effect uh, of uh, processing gyroscopes. The main reason is that, uh, of course, the, what it is being observed, uh, most of these studies which involved are uh, uh, not really a geodesic uh, motion. Of course, in the special cases, you can predict all the geodesic positions. Those were predicted uh, much earlier. And uh, I really didn't want to bring in so-called the observational thing in that. If you look at the, in the spirit, he was, of course, uh, gravitational waves are a different thing in the spirit. And uh, here it is like, more like you want to see the effect, how it works. Of course, it's a two, uh, it is a big boost for uh, uh, testing out the, uh, whatever the result coming from the gravity probe, but they were, what is called the geodesic precisions, which is present uh, when you put uh, the parameter k to be zero there, and you can get all the results. But they were predicted much earlier. That's how they were predicted. Uh, uh, so you mentioned the uh, motion of charged particle in uh, electromagnetic fields. Yes. Uh, have there been study of uh, motion of uh, charged particles in uh, black hole backgrounds using your uh, formalism? Uh, yes, uh, we did uh, some work, but not really a for the uh, charged particle in a simple motion. What we did was with the Chamorro and uh, Spanish group, we have had some work uh, related to uh, spinning motion, spinning charged particle motion around the third black hole they tends to uh, become stationary when the forces balance and they just remain there. So such uh, investigation has been done and this formalism was used there uh, to uh, study the balance of uh, effect, spinning, non-spinning, everything, all the things have been done in Kerr Newman. So you have a charge of black hole and charge particle. So there you have a, a 
all this uh, this thing you have been there are some series of two three papers so the reason i asked because this has shown up in some uh, recent ads cft discussions yes. and uh, there was a lot of confusion and this formalism perhaps can uh, clarify a little bit of yeah yeah they are basically uh, is to get the newtonian insight into some of the general relativistic effects because you know that some of these things are not really intuitive general theory of relativity drags along what is called frame dragging so here you have uh, because of this uh, observers are close to newtonian you define everything with respect to them and then that gives a better understanding uh, of this thing i would like to look at uh, then uh, one one other question so when you say that uh, these things form uh, hypersurfaces you mentioned that uh, some of these observers form hypersurfaces yes. so is there a frobenius like theorem for uh, you know like there is this frobenius theorem which says that if uh, beta y2 beta is zero then yeah. the beta is hypersurface observable yes it is basically the same thing but uh, uh, what all the uh, you can show the, uh, when uh, okay these are the some of the first exercise uh, was given to monkey to learn so these were one is if you if you show that if you have a hypersurface orthogonal vector field then you can show that the vorticity is immediately zero it's very simple you substitute that but the reverse is not true if you have a congruence if it has a, a vorticity is zero then they are not necessarily hypersurface forming because hyper uh, the vorticity being zero is a local concept and the hypersurface forming is a global uh, result so that is why that uh, article uh, which is uh, this green issue king uh, vishweshwara so that article has all the these things so uh, there are two conditions uh, one is uh, if they are uh, two i think uh, by, by the carter theorem which says that in actually symmetric uh, space time uh, it is called uh, i forget the name what is it uh, called the condition which is carter gave okay basically they say that uh, the two surfaces formed by r is equal to constant and uh, uh, theta is equal to constant they are uh, surface forming and they are orthogonal to every bay so if that condition is true then you can show that if the vorticity of the uh, vector uh, killing vector is zero then they are globally hypersurface form so that is the main result uh, which is uh, yes that is the main result in this uh, how the reverse condition is valid there are uh, they are not something very great condition they are very reasonable condition for all space time 